of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. It's great to be with you again. Welcome, everyone. So last time we talked about the importance of preparation and sanctification, and we started just how uh, with, the, with the Thanksgiving prayer. This week, we will start now as we enter. Now we will start getting into some, some action with the still, again, the raising of incense about the verses of symbols are, uh, and, uh, and some of the movements that the priest and the deacon makes during that. So we will start with the first time having, as we call this, the, the morning or the evening raising of incense. So of course that means there's a censer and there's incense and there's a coal. So before we even talk about what we're going to do, we want to quickly talk about what, uh, what, this in, what this censer is. And as you can see, it is a golden uh, censer, as we will explain in one of the hymns later on. And if you can, if you can see it, you will see three strands uh, tying this dome. The three strands, of course, represent the Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then there was one in the middle, which shows that they are one. The three are one. The censer in our church and in our hymnology, and also uh, from, from the reading of the fathers, is always symbolized as the Virgin Mary. Why? Because what we can see is what's this part is holding the divine, the coal, and the coal has also two, two natures. The coal has the, the solid nature and the, the heat and the light. So representing the divine and the human nature of our Lord, which is also in the womb of St. Mary. This represent, that's why this is representing the womb of St. Mary with the humanity and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ inside. So even, even when we're talking about the censer, the censer itself has, has a meaning. Just by looking at it, it can remind us that, yes, our, we worship the Holy Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, it reminds us of St. Mary and how she, as a human, had the divine and the human inside her womb. So we finish the Thanksgiving prayer. The priest will go on the altar and then put five spoons of incense. So he will cross himself in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit and cross the first time with the three normal crosses. Blessed be God, the Father of the Pantocrator, and he will put a spoon. Blessed be his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, and a spoon. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete, amen, and a spoon. Glory and honor, honor and glory, and that's your five spoons. The five spoons also represents the, 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 the ones who, who made offerings. Uh, those are, are like Ab Abel and Noah and Abraham and the, and the incense that were offered by Aaron and Zechariah as well. So we offer the five. We say a small prayer that, that the Lord may receive this, this beautiful incense, the beautiful smoke. And, um, and then we start uh, something that many people, many people see in the altar. And you'll see it several times in the raising of incense and in divine liturgy. What is that? You will see the priest uh, going towards or facing towards the east, saying some prayers, and then the, the deacon opposite him at all times with the cross as well. So what will happen is the, the priest, what people see is the priest is going around and the deacon is going around. This is not a race. This is not uh, the, the priest is trying to catch the deacon because the deacon made something wrong and he's trying to catch up to him. We're not going in circles playing games. We are actually both praying. Both the priest and the deacon are praying. What are we praying for? We pray towards the West, asking the Lord, remember the peace of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We, as we, we, we want peace for the church. And the deacon responds accordingly as well. Then they switch sides, and now we're, the priest is praising the other side, and now we pray for the fathers, the patriarch, the, uh, the bishop, uh, and, and again, the, the deacon responds. Then we go around again and facing the east, so after a full circle, and we pray for our assemblies. We pray, we, even the priest prays for all our assemblies. We want all our assemblies to be good, to be pure, that they may be without obstacle. So we're praying every time you, our brothers and sisters, our children, are gathered, 
somebody's house, maybe somebody's birthday, some dinner. You say, we pray your assemblies are good. And so we pray for the assemblies, and then, and then after that, we pray the, the other thing to protect us. We pray, arise, let your enemies scattered, O Lord, and that the, all his enemies be scattered and his people are, uh, are in, uh, uh, and all his people are full of blessings. are the prayers that we say and so this we went three times around after we went three times around the deacons at the same time are doing what we call the verses of symbols the verses of symbols are normal we come to church and it's normal that we greet those who are in church it's not it's impolite we can't if somebody comes to my house and he just comes to the fridge where's where's your food it's very, very impolite. First he comes and he greets me. Hello, Father James. How are you? How are you doing? How's everything going? Uh, it's great to see you. And we in the church do the same thing. And we say, first, who's here? Of course, God. God, our, our Holy, our, the, God the Holy uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So first thing, we worship the Holy Father. We worship the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. Then, of course, we, we, we say hello to the church. And who's in the church? The angels, the saints, the martyrs. So we greet each one of them uh, by their name. So uh, all, all, the, all the, you could say all of them, you could say part of them, but all the angels and all the saints and all the martyrs, they're here. So it's normal. It's normal to say hello, which is what we say in a, in a fancier word called hail. Hail to the church, and hail to Virgin Mary, and hail to this. So we have this, and we come, and that's the normal thing to do. After we say the verses of symbol, and after the priest, at the same time with the deacon, prays for those the, the three prayers, the peace, the fathers, and the assemblies, we then do what we call a cross. A cross is basically uh, the priest will be in front of the altar, and the first time, worshiping three times as he worships the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We worship the Trinity. As we worship and we bow down, asking, according to your mercy, we're here. We bow down before your holy temple. So we have three worships in front of the altar. After the altar, the priest will turn and go to the side to greet the Virgin Mary. So it's what we call, it's going to be a full 360. So he starts in front of the altar. He will go to his side where Virgin Mary is, and we say, we greet you. Hail to you, full of grace, because she's there. And then he greets, the priest will greet all the angels and the saints and the martyrs, our fathers, the apostles. And then the greatest who was born uh, of, a, of a woman, St. John the Baptist as well. So we greet St. John, we bow down, we go down, and, and we worship uh, the Holy Trinity again, the, the lover of mankind. So all this is in preparation um, in, 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 in going into the next stage of our raising of incense. But we want to explain something very, very important as well. So we said we're coming here and we're saying hello. We're assuming that, of course, all these ranks of angels and archangels and, and, the, and the saints and the martyrs are here. What are they doing here? They're praying. They're praying. They are constantly praying. This is what we call the liturgy in heaven. So what we are, are privileged as sons and daughters of our Lord, we're privileged to come and pray with them. They don't stop. We stop. We stop after two and a half, three hours. We, start, we have a start and we have a stop. In heaven, there's no start or stop. We are joining them. Because we don't see, it doesn't mean it's not happening. We have, we come and we greet all those invisible, wonderful angels, all the saints and all the martyrs, and we have the privilege to come. So come, come. If we don't, if we're not used to this fire, we don't know what's happening, we don't, we don't understand. But if we know that they're praying, they're already praying, and we have the come and, and, and the privilege to come and join them in this prayer, it's a wonderful thing. 
So today we will we will end our session with this part and we'll 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 talk more about the liturgy. Glory be to God forever. Amen.